Soviets and Soviets of the Red Army, how you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich. And I'm Ring Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And guys, we promised you another uh, Brawl Over Breast uh, tournament match, and we deliver today on the map that starts with Z, and I can never say appropriately, so I'm not going to embarrass my Polish friends by attempting it. Rang, who is fighting, what are they bringing, and what should we expect? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have Sean playing first skier with balanced income. And on the right-hand side, we have a very angry bird playing 29th tank call with a vanguard income. The first thing I have to make it the comment about is that I said this to you before we got started. Yeah. But the northernmost Soviet presence just looks like a gaggle. It's like... <laughs> That's a lot of jeeps. Yeah. That's a lot of jeeps. Yeah. Yeah, it's all Ockham and Cheeky. Yep, and a couple of 76 mil guns to support. Facing off against three Ski Jäger pioneers. Now, for those of you who don't know a whole lot about the Ski Jäger division, Rang's kind of about to tell you about them. Yeah, it's just a German light infantry division. Uh, infantry a little bit smaller in size, but pretty well equipped and veterancy. They got KV2s, which is cool. And some light AT gun, decent, decent airplanes, not much anti air. How about uh, tank wise, other than the KV2? Really anything or not too much? Uh, you got some capture T34s, some Stugs, that's really it. T3045 captured. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, good, good, that's good a, tanks. Fair enough, but will that be enough to face off against the IS 2s? <laughs> no. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. I think I got cluster bombers here, so they got they got yeah going for them if I recall. Well, ski Jaegers, I'd imagine they need to have some weapon system that can get them over the mountains. Mm -hmm. um, as we mentioned on Tuesday, folks, uh, the brawl over Brest is all about these hills, as you can see, as we're coming alive right now. Um, close combat setups kind of gets us right into the action immediately, and part of me wishes that for the season we have been doing that since day one. Yeah, it's it's a it's a very like. There's a lot of, like, discussion about whether these close combat or not. I'm in both camps, frankly. Yeah. But, yeah, we're, we're just seeing it uh, open up immediately with Angry Bird, and good god, look at Ozo Gamanshiki. Just, just <laughs> look at him go. Yep, there's nine squads, eight squads. Yeah, it's, it is kind of terrifying to watch them. Now, yep. pack 30s <laughs> and Strokey's behind, so basically, good god. This hammer blow initially is just absolutely brutal. Yeah, and he, he's just keeping on pushing. He just see what ones could have made it through. Three squads managed to push through, and he is just booking it for the back line. Just down south, he's got Strokey rushing to the northern end of that town. That is a real, real A phase Russia, I have to say. And it's. Damn, that's going to capture the entire north. It certainly will. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm not sure Sean was ready for that. Oh my god. God, that was devastating. Jesus Christ, that was pretty devastating. To be fair, yo, we got to realize, if you look at the rest of Angry Birds' lines, it's one, two, three, four, five infantry units, and that's it. True, and we defense. get to see down south, we have the Ski Jäger Pioneers, as well as the Sturm Jäger Pioneers. Excuse me, Ski Sturm Fusiliers, rather. Um, there's a hefty amount of just damage to be done there. Yeah, this is... Exactly what Sean needs to be doing. He probably realized, hey, Angry probably just has everything up north. Let's try and counter push down south and mm, hit him where he's weakest. Well, this and more than that, too, the Ultimate Cheeky are really scary and quick, but they're really delicate. So mm -hmm. you can see already, six guys cannot a town hold. Yeah. So. Yep, and Angry Bird's got some strokeys coming to support for the only regular strokey, so not that great. As, you know, infantry rise goes, so the Ski Jaegers should have a pretty decent time dealing with them. And we're seeing down south real quick. Yep, we're going to see some strokeys being called back in, but it's a 12-12. Um, so it looks like both sides are, are kind of doing that whole attack an echelon thing. They want to go take that right flank and maybe start to sweep. Unfortunately for the Russians, I don't know they're going to be able to do it, as there comes that Strom Panzer coming in now. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the big KV-2. It's going to take a little bit to uh, get to the front line to help out, but it should help in clearing out the town if there's any Russians left inside it. 
the Angry Bird, he's bringing out some T-34s of his own to try and support this no northern push. And those two IS-2s so are going to be a real pain in the arse to deal with for Sean. This is just so heavily armoured. See, we see more strokey, more strokey, more strokey. I just want to call it, I just want to always say strokey TP. I don't know what it is. I think I've just seen them way too much in this game. And this rolls off the tongue so nicely. It really does. Uh, but not to be outdone, Angry Bird says, okay, it's time to uh, fly together, ducks. And um, T-34, 76ers are coming in. And we're actually just getting oodles and oodles of them, really. Mm -hmm. Now, outside of that... Outside of that, I mean, we're, we're taking a collective breath for a moment. Yeah, both sides are just pretty much in the progress of uh, moving to the front. The T-34s are moving in. There's one ski acre here for Panzerfaust, so maybe you can knock out E34 or not. Well, I appreciate the fact that he's not engaging immediately. It'd be kind of stupid yeah. to be like, oh, look, MG42, let me start firing at anything that comes close. Yeah, it's a very good call. And there's also a good call from Angry Bird not to just arrest the tanks through the town, because he would face a rather quick death. Yes, he certainly would. Now, KB2, I did not quite appreciate how devastating those 152mm shells are. Yep. But quite terrifying all the same. Yeah, it's kind of like a ISU-152, but looks more janky, which just makes it so cool. I'm almost amused by the fact as well that we have this double MG-42 in the south-central part of the map that it's just like, oh, you want to come close to me? No. No. <laughs> Field of fire, baby. Field of fire. Yes, sir. Now, the KV continues just to start blasting his way through the town. Um, and, and not for nothing, if he can get a shot on the side of this IS, he should be able to kill it pretty easily. Yeah, I I found in personal experience, those KV-2s actually are pretty decent at killing tanks. I mean, they only have 30% accuracy in the gun, but I don't know what it is. It's just, it's just that KV-2 touch. Oh, this is awesome, too. Oh. Pack 36. <laughs> oh, my God. Heat ammo. Dude, you gotta kill them from that angle. Nice, too. It's like, I feel a tickle. Oh, track's broken. That's a really good critical hit. Especially behind enemy lines. You can easily kill out a tank now. <gasps> Whoa! And there goes there the recon go. on it as well. Yeah, God, I think that's one of the few times we've seen the Pack 36 actually use the, uh, the rocket heat ammunition to kill something in SD2. Well, what I will tell you is that that KV-2 is probably going to go down here. Yeah. And that would be a shame, but we are going to get a Shrek, yep, Shrek team's coming in. It's the tank and spank. The KV-2 does go down. Come on, unload the Shrek is on low jump. Yeah, we go. So, actually really good kills here from Sean. But this could not be any more cinematic, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that was like an action movie. Yeah, right, it's just... <laughs> It'd be even more cinematic if the Panzer Strikes were mounted on the bike, or if he <laughs> shot it from the bike. That like a drive-by. Oh, that would. Yeah. While while we have been watching that that drama play out, the Germans in that kind of central town, i.e., right by where the T thirty four seventy sixes were, they are no longer with us, but they have managed to take out a T thirty four. But Tanko de Saint Niki are coming through. We have this entire column of stroke. He's coming in. How much Angry infantry? Jeez. That is a lot of A-Face infantry to, to have out. I think that's like at least three cards of Strokey. But that's the thing though too, is that he's he's throwing all of his hopes and dreams really on this early play. Yeah, it's all, it's all or nothing. He does have the lead still, not a plus two lead at the moment unfortunately for him, but he is keeping the momentum. He's keeping the pressure on Sean. Yeah, you know, losing both of his IS-2s was definitely a huge mistake. He really did not push him. Yeah, far unsupported. And now he's really paying the price as he has no other tank, like heavy tank armor to deal with these T-3485 and KV-2s being brought out here from Sean. Well, what's more than that, too? The Tanko Desant Niki push. Yes, those guys are devastating in close range. But you gotta get to close range. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is a difficult part. It does have a lot of fire support, at least, for the T-34s and 50 cal half-tracks, but... Once again, Sean has the armor on the field and in good positions. 
Yep, that's not to say everything is going his way. You can see a couple of positions being taken out just by sheer manpower. Yeah. But, um... Ooh, down south, you see a reinforcement group of superiors. I'm kind of fascinated to see how this goes. If for no other reason, the superiors well. can be really, really effective when they're getting close. Yeah. Yeah, it's be enough, honestly, if he uses the superior smart, smartly. That's even a word, I don't think so, to try no, and pick off these Ski Yeagers one by one. That's true, that's true. It's that CB has a superior use of his troops. <laughs> exactly, Khan, exactly. I mean, we're back to the north, you see the Stroke a Column has come in, and I won't say they're getting blown to pieces, but it ain't pretty. I say they're getting blown to pieces. Well, I think it's another one of those cases that are going to win through just by sheer numbers. Yeah. I would surprise to see some captures here pretty quickly. Yep, that's one. That's two. Yikes. Yikes. Yikes and in yikes indeed. Wow. Yeah, Angry Bird really just going the human rave tactics essentially to try and win this. I mean he's spamming he's spamming M10 tank destroyers now. Which, I mean, I, I, I kind of get, but, like, really? I don't know. Yeah. So that's Ooh. a very, very interesting scene, as I'm telling you. But, yeah, go about ahead. About as interesting as we see that uh, the D2, the, excuse me, the Dew 217. I was sure what to call that. I, I don't know the actual model name. Somebody's going to help me out with that, I'm sure. Dornier. Dornier. Thank you. How did I forget that? Uh, but a Dornier coming on in with the four 20 mil cannons in his nose. Yeah, it's real, real good straight from playing to have early on, as it just does so much damage. Whoa, Pack 36 takes out another one with another heat ammo to the <laughs> south. This thing is just brutal. Yeah, goddamn. That's such a funny thing about the Pack 36. It's one of the weakest AT guns, but also one of the strongest. Oh my gosh. Angry Bird is super lucky that this Dornier can't see him. Mm hmm. Which yeah, is, was... he, is he lining up for another attack run? Uh. I don't know how you'd see, so. but that'd be absolutely incredible to strafe these M10s from the rear. Yeah, I mean, I open the top, they're going to take quite a bit of damage. Please, do something. Yeah. He's, there, he's gift wrapping some... Oh my gosh, okay. Yeah, we're on B phase now, so it's the time for Sean to start counter-attacking. He's bringing out a Stug tank. And uh, yeah, I mean, Angry Bird definitely had a very heavy... A phase deck, so is that gonna is he gonna be able to keep up the fight for the rest of the match? That's that's really the question here. And and the and gut reaction is I don't know that he will. I don't think so either. He's thrown so much on the field and lost quite a lot of it. I think one of his crutches he's really got to rely on is those IS twos because you do get quite a few of them. We have twenty ninth tank core fire call. So just being able to have them on the field and, or like I said, there's not really much ground base CT that can penetrate them for for Sean. True, true, but I think uh, the major thing here is if Angry Bird loses this central position, where you see all the 76s and the M10s and all that, if he loses that, that's game over. Yeah. Like you pointed out early on, everything else for him is fairly weakly held. Yeah, yeah, it's really just, especially like the northern area, it's just a few, like 76 mils and strokeys, no 76 mils are starting to go down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The early stug engagement here is going to go decently well. Of course, he's aiming for the half tracks for some strange reason, so. Alrighty. The Dornier finally... Jeez, this Dornier is, I think, is being criminally wasted, though. Yeah, I think he's just having a hard time getting line of sight, unfortunately. You should be able to see those T-34s in the middle. It's so bunched up together, it'd be such a good strafing target. Well, yeah, I mean, if nothing else, we did see that his... See, his troops did have line of sight because they were engaging fire. They were exchanging fire with him, rather. Mm -hmm. But regardless, um, he's got to kind of pick up, get on his horse as well. It looks like 
Sean is lost quite a bit of the territory that matters as well, so he's got to be careful. Yeah, the southern side is not looking good for Sean in the slightest. That initial southern counter attack has definitely slowed down. And yeah, he's that's, that's not good at all. Or, that's not good for him at all. We got his uh, T-34s and M10s moving in to try to flank air rain down south. 37 mil gun is going to be in a good position, however. And the stug. Especially if they allow it to kind of... I mean, everyone's firing with the stug, which I get. But, I don't know, anti-tank guns, I think I'm always more concerned about those because they're, they're a lot easier, more easily hid, rather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Angry Birds still doing a good job keeping that momentum up for now. If he can clear up his southern side, I have a good feeling he'll be able to take this match. If, yes. If. Yeah, look at look, if you're looking at like the southern side for Sean, there's all your ski acres here just sitting around doing nothing. I don't know what he's doing there. I, I think he brought them in with the intent of kind of shifting them along that southern road. I did, I'm pretty sure he saw all those vehicles and thought, okay, I don't want to go anywhere near that center. And there yeah, we go, they can't, they can't get go. back to high gear. Because those guys at the front line really could you use with uh, extra support. Oh, and they'll get it. Um, the big thing here is can they survive long enough, and that is not going to help that situation. No. That's a really good uh, Cobra rocket range of Manga Bird. Almost as good as this Pac-36, who just still continues to just ping rounds off of these M10s. Keep firing! One of them will penetrate. Yeah, well, especially in the M10s, these guys are not really known for their chutzpah, shall we say. Mm-hmm. But other parts of the map, northern part of the map is starting to get a little cleaner, where you can see a 1410 here as opposed to the 159 we had a couple minutes ago. And the M10s are starting to die, they're becoming quite the endangered species. Yeah, Angry Bird is slowly starting to lose his uh, giant spam rough of stuff. Those M10s are very finicky units to use. Because they're pretty good, to be honest, because they've got a good gun and all of that, and decent armor profile, but no machine gun at all. And not much in terms of high explosive firepower, so. You really, I mean, they're tank destroyers, you really only want to use them against tanks. Certainly true. Now, uh, M10 is starting to engage some of the other troops to the north with a gun jam on one of these T-34 80, 85s. But, um, I guess here's the question. Did Sean bring this, or did Angry, is Angry Bird going to be able to outlast him with some of those M10s? I don't know. I, I really, I mean, we haven't done really see any other tanks in the field at the moment. He has that one M10 in the middle, and that's Angry Bird's entire tank force at the moment. Hopefully for Angry Bird, like I say, if he has some IS-2s, those will be very good for just dealing with Sean's tank forces. But Sean is actually starting to push back pretty hard now. He's got the tank advantage, he's got a boatload of infantry in the middle, uh, for, for Ski Eager it is, and he's just trying to uproot these strokey DPs. So hey, down to the south, the Ski Jaegers did not quite get as much done as I kind of figured they were going to. Well, they didn't. No, that, that 50 cal half track is definitely proven to be a pain in the ass at long range. But the town is slowly, slowly being reduced as we might expect. Um, not a lot of leadership from the Soviets, I guess it kind of plays into the whole thematic idea behind them, but I uh, would have thought there'd been more here. Mm -hmm. uh, and these Cobra runs have been instrumental, I think, in keeping Angry Bird flying pretty high. Yeah. This is slowing down Sean's infantry advances. Yeah, up north, Sean is uh, making the pushes here for uh, Skiga Pioneers. Taking some vital positions, yeah. Gonna be capturing two flags up north. But still, Sean is on the back foot at 10.14. Just due to uh, Angry Bird's like flank down south of the uh, 50k half tracks. Yeah, the Dorniers are coming in now. Yeah. That's one. You get second. That's two. Lovely jubbly. Now it's just the Strokey DP, and I think that uh, the Ski Jaeger Pioneer and this Storm Ski Jaeger should be more than enough to kind of keep them at bay. Yeah. 
Now, other than that, though, the Dornies have nothing else to really do from a vehicle perspective. No, ah, there's nothing. It's just some infantry target. True. I've seen an IS-2 being brought in down to, uh, south to help out, yeah. And that should definitely be a rather big help. But, uh, yeah, up north, yo, really not looking good for Ungerbird. He's kind of lost all his stuff up here. If Sh Sean can keep up his momentum, he sh might be able to, you know, complete the captures northern sunlight. It certainly seems to be the case. Um, there is only one artillery piece being brought on in right now. And as good as a 76 mil is, I'm not sure that's going to be enough to turn back the tide. N no, it won't. It definitely will not be. This is interesting. The, the, the laugh was coming on in. I think he was having a laugh, trying to engage the Dornier. <laughs> Two Dorniers, in fact. I, I, yeah, I'm not sure what he was thinking there. But whatever. Yeah. Hey, those Dorniers can ask, even though they're, you know, ground attack planes, if they get behind you, you're, you're dead. You're simple as that. Well, the turret. Turret comes above or below in this case. Well, the Dornia, I believe yeah. it's, uh... It's above. It's behind the, uh, cockpit. Oh, okay. I think there's one above and one below, maybe? Well, for Zooming right now, on the only one seems to matter is the one yeah, above. Yeah, it's one above, one below. These, uh, still an awful lot of firepower. I'm gonna say the, the B-26 pre-nerf. Mm-hmm. From way back when. Uh, and we're gonna see 15-9 now, so, yep. With the death of that armored punch in the center, Angry Bird has been clipped quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's his, um... Yeah, he's just kind of lost all his tanks. And now he has nothing. Yeah, yeah. He soared for a bit, now he's got to live in the dirt. Yeah, that's, that's really the risk that you take when you go so aggressive in A-phase. Like, he was a very good aggressive punch, but... I think also losing both those IS-2s was a huge blow. Because I feel like if he kept them a little bit more reserved and back, I don't think his northern purse would have gone as a, as a bad for Angry Bird. True. True, and as we get to phase C here, uh, Sean is really got himself all hunky-dory as we see a new wave of was it, ski Jaegers and Strom ski Jaegers coming on in as well. Yeah, yeah, he's... All the infantry, and his infantry is all good, because, yeah, they're ski acres, man. They got STGs and veterancy, and STGs. Once again, it is very lucky over here for Angry Bird that some of this air power cannot see his advancing columns. I feel like that would be a mistake waiting to happen. Yeah. Oof. One thing I'm also surprised by, uh, anti-air for... Sean, what does that look like for the ski Jaegers? Pretty bad. You get like, you get you get very little anti-air. Your your air power is really your anti-air for the most part. Gotcha. Oh, we got a, a leader hero T thirty four. I'm gonna let you say it. Uh, I'm lost here. Uh, up north. A oh, there we hero go. Hero unit. Reshetnikov? Thank you. Nikolai Mikhailovich Reshetnikov. I'm sure I'm saying it incorrectly as well, but I love rolling my R's for Russian. Um, meanwhile, the town, that looks more like it's going to be named Kaput. Um, <laughs> or at least I think that's, that's what the Russians would call it. Um, maybe more simply, Dosvidanya. Either way, those last brave drug DPs are getting depressed and hunted rather effectively. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a lot of Ski Jaegers. It's, it's just a lot of Ski Jaegers, man. Overwhelming force. Pretty impressive, too, since there's no snow. I know, right? Or no, or no, like, real mountains over here. It's pretty flat. You know, we talked recently about having a fun division for the Germans that would be consistently, or actually for the Americans, that would be a lot of Boite German stuff. Mm -hmm. Outside of being the partisans. And there was a, one of the viewers from me, I think, posted something about it. I think it was the 82nd or 83rd Armored. And, yes. and I've had this completely backwards, I'm sure. But we need more Boita stuff. We need an entire division with Boita oh. stuff. We talked about it. We need this. Yeah, you know, guys, he had like a captured King Tiger and then like yes. a captured like Messerschmitt plane and all of that. 
Yeah, it was a yeah. bunch of random kind of like it was like Hope Art's Funnies, but for like Boyton material. I think there was a there's a story that went around about um yeah like a German officer or not drove into a column by accident because they thought they were German forces advancing or retreating. I would and not they found out they're Americans. Oof. Wow, the stroke from the side is complete surprise. Oh, to... <laughs> oh, this this is a that was a textbook ambush. Oh my god, Jesus I Christ, that looks beautiful. That's how you actually kill Stalin tank right here, ladies and gentlemen. Man, like that that's gotta suck for Angry Bird, but that was just beautiful to watch from Mark's perspective. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, Angry Bird has just ran out of steam. It seems. He just does not have much on the field anymore. Just just look at the mini-map differences for both sides. Yep, but you know what? The thing I, I will respect about Angry Bird is I doubt he will go and allow himself to be put in a cage so quickly. Mm -hmm. He will fight to the end. Now, uh, KB-2. KB-2s have done decently well. Kind of, you know, blowing infantry to pieces like we just saw right now. Baumgarten might be able to get a kill from this next infantry squad. But, I believe um, he's killed a tank or two as well. Well, the KB-2s overall have done pretty well with that, yeah. Yeah. What about the fact that their HE shells have 7 damage? <laughs> it's a big kaboom. Yeah, but you know, all the other freaking HE stuff is like, oh look, one. That's because it's like a proper assault gun. And, like, I, I know it's kind of weird. It, know, they, they did I it know. for, like, balance reasons, really, enough to, like, proper tank. HE shows like one to two HE. It's it's kind of weird. Like I get that. I just and I, I just it's one of those moments that for me it's like all oh, the German stuff just like completely nerfed. I know the Sherman's yeah. got like only the that same one thing, as yeah. well. Uh, yeah, because in SD forty four, like you know, all the tank guns would have different <laughs> HE values, but now everything's just standardized, which is a bit of a shame. True. True. These Cobras are here, but I'm not sure them going. Is going to be enough to scare the Germans back. Oh. Down to the south, I'm amused by the fact that there's this entire mass of German troops, and there's kind of like, eh, we've captured everything really worthwhile. That's why there's no need for us to go any further. <laughs> we'll hold here. Also, we need to talk about the fact that Sean needs to change his gamer tag because every time I look at him, I want to call him the Russian. Oh yeah, because of the uh, the flag. The flag, yeah. And the red flag. Certainly there's no red storm rising here. Do you want to take us to times two? I think we can probably do that. Alright. Uh at uh 2540. Yeah. And times two. Alright. Uh so Roshetnikov up, up top, he is able to start engaging some of this material, but he still is very under armored for what he needs to be kind of dealing with here, so he's gotta be careful. Yeah. Like he's a little bit outgunned now. In terms of tank firepower for Angry Birds, he's got a few T3045s, 30, but now Sean has T3045 of his own and a bunch of stunks on the field. By the way, last rookie DP inside this warehouse. He's trying to retreat, but he's going to get shot down in the open as he's pulling back. Poor guys. Yeah. He's gone. And with that, 19 to 5. So the early punch, not enough. Uh, it seems much more needs to go kind of have a pinch to take the map back by an inch, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It was, it was a good it was a good good try, though. I really did enjoy seeing oh, yeah. that initial breakthrough, but... Oh, yeah. You just... A little bit... I'm trying to think of the word here. He's like a little bit too carefree with his, yeah. with his units. You need uh, to be a bit more... You need to preserve him a little bit more. I, I believe the analytical term would be he was a profligate spender with his men lives. Yes. Yeah. Yes. At least that's that's the uh, the tutor in me is speaking that right now. But we are seeing, like you said, it's it's weird to see a, a division that you said has really no armored power have so many vehicles on the field. Yeah, uh, Sean's been doing a really good job of keeping those stugs and T-34s alive. You only get four of those captured uh, T-34s. And like one or two cards of stugs. So it's, yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive. It certainly is. And as it, things close out here, well done for Sean for not panicking. I would have panicked like crazy. Same here. At, at Northern Push was terrifying. Zbukshin, there we go. I will never be able to say that, that 
correctly, and I'm sure someone out there is going to be cringe, but uh, regardless. Yeah, 1,000 kill. It's always like a 1,000 kill different most of the time. I have no idea what it is. I think it's one of those things, though, too. Like, you get through a good chunk of the map, and I'm just taking a look here as I say this. Um, but then it starts to snowball a bit. Oh, yes. Yes, that's true. Like, Trogy and then Sean was just kind of shooting a lot of things. Well, you were saying last, by the way, on Tuesday about um, the idea of a ground ace. Uh, Buchner over here, one of the Pack 36, he's got three stars, but he's got four M10s and two T3476s to his name. So he was the killiest oh, guy of all. God damn. Absolutely fantastic. That's, yeah, that's the guy down south. Yes. Yeah, JG is like, once again, guys, small AT guns are the best AT guns in Steel Division 2. Seems kind of intuitive, but yeah. Yeah, it's, it seems really silly. Because you, you, you see all the documentaries, and everyone's like, oh, it's just called cool door knocker, guys. It was useless in Barbarossa, but then you play Steel Division 2, and we're all critical hits, sure thing. Yes. Yes, true. And, and well, let's just say yes and leave it at that. Yes. But, all right. Uh, any final pearls of wisdom? You think Ski Jaegers should have a bonus moving down hills because they have skis? I think you have to actually uh, click them on because at that oh. point it's going to be like, you know, um, true lies. As the guys come down the hill, they have to get an accuracy debuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For it, the increased mobility. They turn into a vehicle briefly. Yes, yes, yes but only on the elevation. Mm-hmm. So guys, feel free to let us know your own comments about that in the meantime. But uh, until next time, I'm Con Ulrich. Rangaroo, take it easy.